on World News Tonight. Approaching brinkmanship. Will China send arms to Russia? US condemns China for helping Russia. Protocol talks. Deputy PM Dominic Raab says Britain is close to a deal on post-Brexit trade arrangements in Northern Ireland. Shipwreck. Boats sank in rough seas off southern Italy, killing scorchers of migrants. And the perfect treat. Eatery opens in India with a special customer in mind. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening and you are joining us on World News. We're starting off tonight with some political scandals in neighbouring India. India's Federal Investigating Agency arrested a top local minister in the capital territory of New Delhi in connection with alleged irregularities in a liquor policy, the most high-profile arrest in the case so far. The CBI said in a release that Manish Sisodia was arrested in an ongoing investigation in a case related to alleged irregularities in framing and implementation of the excise policy. India's federal agencies have been probing suspected irregularities in the Aam Admi Party-led Delhi government's liquor policy after a government official issued a report in July last year in which he suggested the policy benefited private liquor retailers by offering them discounts at the cost of the exequer. Sisodia's party, the Aam Admi Party, a staunch critic of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, has denied any wrongdoing on his behalf and said his arrest is political vendetta from Modi's government. India's financial crime-fighting agency, the Enforcement Directorate, is separately investigating French liquor major Perrault Ricard from allegedly violating the same liquor policy. There is a new revelation on the origin of the COVID pandemic. The U.S. Department of Energy in a report has assessed that the COVID-19 pandemic most likely came from a laboratory leak in China. The Department of Energy assessed in the intelligence report that it had low confidence the COVID-19 virus accidentally escaped from a lab in Wuhan. Tonight, Department of Energy has concluded COVID-19 likely came from a lab leak in China. According to two sources with direct knowledge, key lawmakers on the House and Senate Intelligence Committees were recently briefed by top intelligence officials on a classified report, which cited new information leading the Energy Department to back the theory with low confidence, symbolic of a larger divide within the intelligence community on how the virus started with agencies differing on whether the novel coronavirus may have leaked from a laboratory or through natural transmission. The Wall Street Journal reporting Sunday it was unintentional and a lab mishap, a U.S. official confirming that assessment from the report and stressing there's still consensus this was not a Chinese bioweapon. But there is still no definitive answer or agreement from the U.S. government on the overall origin. The agency continues to support the thorough, careful and objective work of our intelligence professionals in investigating the origins of COVID-19 as directed by President Biden. The GOP-led House Oversight Committee, confirming the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, provided classified information to the panel earlier this month. There are new concerns that China is considering supplying Russia with weapons to help its invasion of Ukraine as the fighting intensifies there. The U.S. has made clear behind closed doors that if China provides lethal aid to help Russia in its invasion of Ukraine, it would have serious consequences. Russia and China signed a no-limits partnership in February 2022, shortly before Russian forces invaded Ukraine. Even though China has not moved toward providing lethal aid to assist Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the United States has made clear behind closed doors that such a move would have serious consequences. That's according to White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. He told, quote, Beijing will have to make its own decisions about how it proceeds, whether it provides military assistance. But if it goes down that road, it will come at real cost to China. The United States and its NATO allies in recent days have been scrambling to dissuade China from such a move, uh, aid to uh, Russia, making public comments on their behalf that China is considering providing lethal equipment to Russia. The comments come as protesters across the globe are calling for an end to the war now in its second year and days after U.S. President Joe Biden met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, promising new American military aid worth $500 million. 
Chairman of the U.S. House Foreign Affairs Committee Michael McCall cited reports that drones are among the lethal weapons China has considered sending to Russia. Russia and China signed a no-limits partnership last February before Russian forces invaded Ukraine. Economic links between Russia and China have deepened, and so far, China has not condemned the conflict. The West reacted with skepticism to China's proposal on Friday for a Ukraine ceasefire. Council members should not be fooled by calls for a temporary or unconditional ceasefire. Ukraine rejected the proposal unless it involves Russia withdrawing its troops. A preliminary meeting of the Chinese Communist Party's Central Committee kicked off to reveal the agenda to be presented at this year's annual political event, dubbed the Two Sessions. And at this year's event, a reshuffle of the party-state organization is to be expected. Members of the Chinese Communist Party's Central Committee, who were elected at the 20th Party Congress last October, came together on Sunday to begin a key meeting to carry out the agenda for a major reshuffle of the party and the government ahead of next month's two sessions. According to China's state-run Xinhua News Agency on Sunday, the three-day plenary session in Beijing began with President Xi Jinping presenting a work report. And the plenary session is garnering all the more attention this time, as China is expected to announce new leadership in the party, including a new premier who will take over the role long held by Li Keqiang, who is now retiring. Not to mention, aside from President Xi, most of the officials at the top are expected to be replaced. With the two sessions marking the official launch of President Xi's third term as China's leader, a lot of other changes are expected within the party and the government. This may also include a plan to launch what's being tentatively called the Home Affairs Committee to oversee police, counterintelligence and immigration, an organization that some watchers are comparing to the former Soviet Union's KGB. Pundits predict major changes within the party and the government at this year's two sessions. But most importantly, President Xi is set to strengthen his grip on power. Now, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen will announce a new Brexit deal for Northern Ireland if the two can agree final details during talks in Britain. The deal seeks to resolve tensions caused by the 2020 post-Brexit arrangements governing the British province and its open border with EU member Ireland. But it remains to be seen whether it will go far enough to end political deadlock in Northern Ireland and satisfy critics in Britain. The deal is expected to ease physical checks on goods flowing from Britain to Northern Ireland and give the British province a say over the EU rules it has to implement under the complicated terms of Britain's exit from the bloc. As part of its exit agreement, Britain signed an accord with Brussels known as the Northern Ireland Protocol to avoid imposing politically contentious checks along the 500-kilometre land border with Ireland. But the protocol effectively created a border for some goods moving from Britain because it kept Northern Ireland in EU's single market for goods. That also left Northern Ireland subject to some EU rules, even though it was not a member of the bloc. The head of the European Research Group, Marc Francois, warned that trying to apply any deal without first seeking parliamentary approval would be unwise. The government has said parliament will have a chance to express itself, but has stopped short of explicitly promising a vote. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. At least 59 migrants, including 12 children, have died, and dozens more are feared missing after their boat sank in rough seas off southern Italy. The vessel carrying migrants from Afghanistan, Pakistan, Somalia and Iran broke apart while trying to land near Croton. Pieces of boat wreckage washed ashore on Italy's southern coast on Sunday. Small signs of the disaster that unfolded before dawn when a boat carrying migrants crashed into rocks and sank in rough seas, leaving at least a dozen children dead, as well as scores of others, according to authorities. A baby, only a few months old, was among the first ones recovered, according to an Italian news agency. Italian police said the boat set sail from Turkey about four days ago. Survivors said the boat may have been carrying as many as 200 people, from countries including Afghanistan and Iran. The vessel crashed near a seaside resort in the region of Calabria, and the interior minister said as many as 30 people could still be missing. Police said an EU border agency plane had spotted the migrant boat the day before, 
about 46 miles from the coast. But patrol boats sent to intercept it had to return to port because of the severe weather. The incident reopened a debate on migration in Europe and Italy, where the recently elected right-wing government's tough new laws for migrant rescue charities have drawn criticism from groups such as the United Nations. Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney expressed deep sorrow for the deaths and blamed human traffickers who profit while offering migrants, quote, the false prospect of a safe journey. Calabria's governor, Roberto Occhioto, called it a tragedy that should have been avoided. It is a day of grief for Calabria. Calabria is a region that welcomes people. Last year, we welcomed 18,000 migrants, but we can't be abandoned by Europe. Italy is one of the main landing points for migrants trying to enter Europe by sea. Many want to go on to richer northern European nations, but to do so, they must brave the world's most dangerous migration route. The UN's Missing Migrants Project estimates more than 220 have died or disappeared in the central Mediterranean so far this year. Mass power outages, flooding and the closures of both motorways and beaches are affecting California as a rare winter swarm sweeps the U.S. state. More than 120,000 people, many of them in the Los Angeles area, are without electricity after days of fierce winds. Nearly 85,000 households and businesses were without power in the Los Angeles area as unusual winter storms continue to sweep parts of California with rain, snow and biting cold temperatures. The State Transport Agency said heavy snow forced the steep grade of Interstate 5, known as the Grapevine, to be closed. The I-5 is the largest highway leading north out of the city. Several more southern points of the freeway in and around Los Angeles were also closed due to flooding. In Northern California, San Francisco braced for record cold temperatures on Saturday, while the National Weather Service warned residents of state capital Sacramento to avoid travel from Sunday through Wednesday as rain and snow started up again after a reprieve on Saturday. On Twitter, the agency said, quote, extreme impacts from heavy snow and winds will cause extremely dangerous to impossible driving conditions and likely widespread road closures and infrastructure impacts. The next set of storms will bring wind gusts of up to 50 miles per hour in the Sacramento Valley and up to 70 miles per hour in the nearby Sierra Nevada mountains. SpaceX will launch another rocket from the Kennedy Space Center to head up to the International Space Station. They will conduct science experiments and space maintenance activities for the next six months. The crew comprises two Americans, an astronaut from the UAE and a Russian cosmonaut. While SpaceX rocket launches can feel routine, there is nothing routine about space travel these days. Thank you, Falcon 9 and uh, Earth. NASA and the Russian Space Agency continue carrying each other's astronauts and cosmonauts to space, even as war rages in Ukraine. This is Mission Control Houston. While on the as orbiting space station, a docked been, uh, Soyuz spacecraft uh, suddenly sprang a leak in December. And the flight controllers here at Mission Control in Houston have been noticing uh, a stream of particles coming out of the uh, Soyuz MS-22 vehicle. A coolant leak likely caused by a micrometeor leaving a U.S. astronaut and two cosmonauts without a lifeboat in case of emergency. Then in February, another leak. This time, a Russian cargo ship docked to the station. Again, Russia says a micrometeor was probably to blame. On Friday, Russia launched a replacement Soyuz lifeboat. And liftoff. Now, another SpaceX rocket is poised for an early morning launch. Crew 6 includes two Americans, an astronaut from the UAE, and Russian cosmonaut Andrei Fedeyev. Steve Bowen is the mission commander. I don't think we avoided it so much as it just never comes up. We all have the same goal in space. They've been training together for months, even with U.S.-Russian relations, at their worst in 30 years. Life on uh, the International Space Station, life of people, of humans in space, is the best example of how people should be living back on Earth. 250 miles above the Earth, Russian and American lives depend on each other. We have some good news for you. 
hundreds of thousands of people around the world struggle to fall asleep at night. To help people suffering from insomnia, the South Korean sleep tech market is rapidly evolving with smart mattresses and the approval of the nation's first digital therapeutics. Insomnia, a common type of sleep disorder, is giving people across the globe sleepless nights. But it has also become a burgeoning business. In Korea, the number of people suffering from insomnia has been on an upward trend for the past four years with more than 680,000 people seeking treatment in 2021. The global market for insomnia treatments was worth more than 5 billion US dollars in 2022 and is slated to top 6 billion dollars by 2028. As the market continues to grow, the sleep tech industry has seen the release of many promising products. One domestic home appliance company jumped into the sleep tech industry with the release of smart mattresses late last year. We have replaced the springs in our mattresses with the more advanced sleep style technology. With sleep style technology, the hardness of the mattress can be adjusted to the user. Sleep tech devices are not the only area of the insomnia market that is advancing. South Korea's Ministry of Food and Drug Safety on the 15th gave its first domestic marketing approval for the digital therapeutic app SOMS for insomnia treatment. The SOMS app treats sleep disorders by giving real-time feedback on sleep habits over six to nine weeks. Patients fill out sleep journals every day. The sleep efficiency index is then calculated based on these entries. The journal entries also help patients keep track of how they slept at night. This helps patients take the first step in curing insomnia, realizing what their sleeping habits are and how much their sleeping disorder has progressed. There are still several hurdles to overcome for domestic digital therapeutics as they are not yet included in the state health insurance system. The future of the domestic insomnia market remains bright, though, as cutting-edge sleep tech products and digital therapeutics continue to emerge. Welcome back. Hollywood's biggest names gathered for the 29th Screen Actors Guild Awards. The evening's red carpet was alive with playful, detailing, sparkling sequins and saturated color. And the actor goes to everything, everywhere, all at once. Everything, everywhere, all at once has cemented its status as the Oscars frontrunner after several big wins at the Screen Actors Guild Awards. The Multiverse Adventure won Best Film Cast at the ceremony, while several of its stars were individually recognized. And the actor goes to Michelle Yeoh. Michelle Yeoh was named Best Actress, beating frontrunner Kate Blanchett. Everything Everywhere All at Once was the big winner at Saturday night's 29th Annual Screen Actors Guild Awards. Michelle Yeoh and Jamie Lee Curtis won Best Lead Actress and Best Supporting Actress for Everything Everywhere All at Once, respectively. And their co-star, Kei Hui Khan, also was a winner, noting that he is now the first Asian actor to win the SAG Award for Best Supporting Male when accepting his award. And the actor goes to Brendan Fraser. Brendan Fraser won Best Lead Actor for The Whale. On the TV side, the cast of Abbott Elementary was named Best Comedy Series Ensemble, while the White Lotus cast won the award for the Best TV Drama Series Ensemble. And the actor goes to The White Lotus! The White Lotus scored another win for Jennifer Coolidge, who was named Best Actress in a Drama Series, while Ozark star Jason Bateman was named Best Drama Series Actor. Jean Smart, who recently revealed she is recovering from a heart procedure, won Best Actress in a Comedy Series for Hacks. Her co-star Christopher McDonald accepted the award on her behalf. And the actor goes to... Sam Elliott. Oh my God. Other winners were announced in the categories of Best Male and Female Actor in a TV Movie or Limited Series, which went to Sam Elliott for 1883 and Jessica Chastain for George and Tammy. Heading into the ceremony, the Banshees of Inisha Rin and Everything Everywhere All at Once topped this year's nominations with five nods each, including in the top category of Best Cast. 
And that is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you missed any of the stories tonight, you can always catch the entire program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash other than English. And finally, we leave you tonight with an eatery opened in the central Indian city of Indore in the state of Madhya Pradesh with a special customer in mind, Poochers. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.